seen automobiles with beautiful wood grain in them on the dashboards and the garnish moldings. But what we have here is an old 41 Chevrolet dashboard. We're strictly for demonstration purposes. But what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to do some uh, wood graining. The first thing you do before you get started is you want to try to find the base coat that the factory used underneath their wood grain, this right here. The place you'd look is on the bottom of the dashboard or behind the cracks or crevices. And if it's rusty like this dashboard, you might find it inside a glove box like we did here. Here's some remnants of the old color right here. We took a little rubbing compound, we cleaned that up, and what we'll do is we're going to take this glove box door up to a paint store, and we're going to have them match the color. This color here is out of an interior section of the paint chips. You'll find most of these browns and tans used in the modern cars in the interior section. Now the paint store might tell you that this paint has a flattening agent in it to dull it down. We're not worried about that. All we want is the color. So now that you've located your color, order a quart or so of acrylic lacquer and bring it back and now you're ready to do something with a dashboard. The very first thing you want to do is make sure you check it over for damage and excess holes. If years ago, people put fog lights or whatever on, the, on their dashboard, and they drilled a hole for them. You don't want to have holes that you don't need when you go back with your car. So make sure you check over for excess holes and damage. Next thing you want to do is, because this is kind of a rusty dashboard, this is going to have to be sandblasted. And we've talked about what sandblasting does to sheet metal if you use it on heavy heavy on sheet metal and it'll have to be uh, sandblasted quite heavy on this dashboard. But I don't think that'll be a problem here because we have a lot of curves. So I don't think we're going to hurt the dashboard by sandblasting to get this rust off of it. So now we're ready to go to the outside and we're ready to do some sandblasting. As you can see, we've got our dashboard primed and painted. There's a few pits in this dashboard that we didn't bother to take out. We're not telling you that. We want you to take them out before you try to wood grain your dashboard because they're going to show up if you don't. We had to do it to save some time. We're using this Chevrolet dashboard because we wanted to show you the authentic thing. We need to work with some curves. We need to work with a glove box door. The, the glove box door is installed on the dashboard here because you want the grain to follow the lines and what have you. Now we also sandblasted the back side of the dashboard. That's to make sure that rust and what have you doesn't fall down in your face later on when you're putting the car together. We've masked off the back of the glove box door. That's to keep it from getting wood grain on it because most of them are base color, not wood grain. Okay. Now, when a professional wood grains one of these dashboards, he has the, uh, the uh, tools and equipment to do it with, and of course we don't have that. But let me explain how that's done. A photograph is actually taken of a piece of wood. And this photograph is a photo engraved onto a sheet of copper, maybe 18 to 20 inches uh, wide and four feet long. And the operator lays this sheet on a smooth table, a smooth level surface. He pours ink onto the surface of this uh, engraved plate. He moves the ink around with a squeegee and when he fills all the cavities he squeegees off the excess. Then he takes a piece of special rubber that doesn't have any kind of a, uh, openings to it, any uh, uh, little holes or anything, and he lays it on, the dash on his uh, plate. He picks up the image and he brings it over and he puts it on his dashboard. And that's the way they transfer the image from the plate to the dashboard. Well, we don't have that. What we have is just ordinary skills. And I'm no artist by any scope of the imagination. I can't draw a round circle. But I found out that a lot of wood is not perfect. In other words, the grains are not perfect. They, uh, they run in all different directions, up and down. And that's what makes them so pretty. So what we're going to do now is show you the tools that we're going to use. We've got some 
things here. We really blew the budget here. We've been talking all, all through these tapes on how you want to save money, and we, we really spent it. We've got some toothpicks. We've got some cotton balls. We've got a little mineral spirits in this cup. We've got a cheap paint brush here, an artist brush. We've got a, one of these acid brushes that we used, and we chopped up the edge of it. We wanted to make it kind of rough. We have some newspaper. And of course, we went to a home decorating store, and we bought one of these tools. This is help. This is used to make these cathedrals that we're talking about in the wood. We'll show you how this. You can make a couple other things with this, too. So in order to get started, what we're going to do is just simply take this artist oil that we use. Now, you don't want to use the artist acrylics. You want to use the art, artist oils. And what we're going to do is just simply get into this thing real good, and we're going to smear this over the whole dashboard. We want to make sure that we get into places like behind here where you might see it if you were walking up to the car from the front through the windshield. Also, you have to make sure that you get it inside the glove box opening all through the area where the wood graining would go on in. You work it in good, not real heavy. We don't want to put this on real heavy. All we want to do is, is just have a nice coating all the way around. Okay, once you get inside the glove box door, I mean inside there, and then you want to do the inside of the glove box door itself, the edges have to have the artist oil on them all the way around. You don't want to have that showing up with just a color. Now we'll continue on and put it over the whole dashboard. We don't want to like make it thick, like I said, because we're going to have a lot of material on this when we get finished. When we get finished with this, we're going to shoot about eight coats of clear lacquer on it. We want to make sure that we don't have a lot of material that will tend to crack a little later on when you get it in the car. That's why we specified not to put too much of the uh, primer and uh, base color on. As you can see, the base color is only needed to get you started with something. This area would generally be covered up on this dashboard, but we'll do it anyhow. We may need the space because we're going to attempt to do three or four different kinds of uh, grains or, mo or more if I can get my head together here. Now you want to make sure you don't overlook any places, even down at the bottom. Sometimes the factory didn't wood grain all the way to the bottom. That's the reason you can find the base coat. What if you can't find a base coat, or what if you want to change the color for some reason? Well, that's up to you. You can go to the uh, paint store and get yourself a, uh, a quart of base color, whatever you want. Maybe it's instead of this uh, tan color, it might be a reddish brown. You might want to duplicate any kind of a color, I mean any kind of a wood grain, and the way to do it is just to go ahead and experiment. Try to look at a piece of wood. It's good to have a piece of wood laying around. In just a second, I'll show you what I mean by having a piece of wood or some, something similar laying around so that you can actually try to work with it. You may not be much of an artist, but you'll be surprised what you can do with a, with a paintbrush and a few other tools here that'll uh, make it really look like a good product. And don't get discouraged with this thing. If you happen to uh, think that you're not doing a good job of it, you might want to just walk away from it for a while. And we'll show you all about that in just a second. Just about have it rubbed, cleaned through. We may add a little later on to a, a place or two, but right now we just want to get the whole thing covered. Make sure you go around your edges, because if you 
overlook something later on, it's sure going to make a, a bad job. That doesn't look too bad. We've got a pretty good amount smeared here. I'll make sure we get up into that area there so that the garnish molding will cover everything. Okay. Now, I'm sure you've seen some wood graining people have done with, in the uh, hardware areas. They do furniture a lot. And the way they do that, of course, is use newspaper. So we've got some old car newspaper, come to think of it. Now, if you bundle your paper up and just pull it across, you'll be getting a little bit of a wood grain. I've seen 49 and 50 Packards that had something similar to this, just kind of straight. Just real nice. Okay, what if happens if you have a mistake or if you want to quit on it, you're not happy with what you got, or you got to leave for a while? Well, you take a little bit of mineral spirits, wash it off, dry it real good, and if you want to leave it go for a couple of days until you get your energy up again, go for it. But that's the way you can handle it. This stuff you can work with for hours. Now we'll re-oil that and we'll get back to doing some grain here. See if we can't do three or four different kinds of grains. And I always have to remember the first couple of times I've done this that I was really disgusted with what I had, especially after I got through doing the grain and before I had the clear on it. It just looks so doggone bad. So don't get disgusted because you really won't enjoy it or you won't even have a good feeling about it until you actually put the, the uh, clear lacquer on it. Now, we're going to get a little bit of a start. And I always think, too, that the woods aren't really perfect. They've got a lot of imperfections in them, and that's what makes them so pretty. Try to pull this straight across and do a little bit of that. Okay. Now, quite a few years ago, we restored a model a Model A for a man, and he brought a book in that was written by the Model A club people. And it said in the book that the way you wanted to duplicate a Ford grain on a Model A would be to take some toothpicks in your hands, and after you've pulled it with a paper like this, to start a, a motion like this, little short jabs, that this was to duplicate some sort of a mahogany finish that Henry Ford used on a Model A. And it didn't look worth a darn to me when we were doing it. I thought, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. That looks real dumb. But by golly, we put some clear on all the garnish moldings and the dashboards, and he took that thing to a Model A show and if you've ever been to Model A shows, you know they over-restore them, and to win a first-place trophy is hard. And he took a first-place trophy with our handmade wood graining. But that's one thing that you can try. Another thing you want, might want to try is to do a little burl. You've seen burl wood, and what makes it so pretty is that it's just all chopped up. It, it, burl veneer was actually cut off of a bruise of a tree, or maybe out of the roots, and it has configurations going in all different directions. So you do a little burl just by doing a little twist with your with your cotton uh, ball and it just kind of overlap them and just work with it and if you keep playing around you may want to put a little dab of, of uh, heavier color someplace, and, you, and like I say, don't get discouraged because you won't really appreciate what you got until you've finished the project and put clear on it. That's unfortunate to say that because you can understand that if you have to, uh, if you're not happy, after you put the clear on it, you're going to have to sandblast and go back to work again. But we found out that this is 
this, this did a pretty decent job. We did a, a 41 Cadillac, I believe, with a, a burl similar to this, and it, it, the guy was really happy with it, and I was too. I thought it came out real nice. It wasn't really this color. We, we kind of uh, did it in a lighter wood that he had picked, some sort of a thing, but it came out real pretty, and he was real happy with it. Okay, now that doesn't look like too much, but the thing to do is to sort of just swirl them all over in different directions. Make sure that you that you uh, got them kind of overlap one another, cover it up, whatever. It looks it'll look real good when you get through with it. Now we have an old paintbrush here. We chopped this up. And let's see if we can do something with it. What we want to do is sort of make some, some irregulars. And some, sometimes this is a little difficult but because the brush really isn't as stiff as it should be. So I should have had a little bit larger brush and I should have left it soak in some paint and get hard so that when I trimmed off the edges it would be uh, a little bit better in the, what it's doing. But let's try Let's try this tool. This is the uh, home decorating version of wood graining, and it has three different places that you can work with. It has these blocks on the bottom. It has these curls here to make the uh, uh, cathedrals, I call them. And then it has this comb here that you can swirl with. So let's try a little bit of that. And just by pulling, and sometimes you want to give it a little wiggling motion, just anything to, to, uh, to help duplicate some of the wood. All right, let's see what this side over here does. I have, haven't used this for a while, but let's see what that does. That's kind of different. It leaves a, uh, some sort of a, a wood grain. You might want to even Try something like that, a little swirl. Okay, now I haven't done this for a while either, but let's see how you do the cathedral. If I can hold this thing correctly. The idea on the cathedral, I probably have to start with a higher spot, is to, is to rock it as you go. And let's see if that works. I believe I've done it backwards, so let's try it again. Put a little bit of grain in there, and we'll try it this way this time. And, th and this is kind of tricky. You have to pull it and rock it at the same time. Still doesn't look good. I'm not really getting the effect that I want there. And I think I'm going to have to use just a tad bit more oil to do it. Give us a little bit of something to work with underneath, and maybe I'm not pulling it fast enough. Well, didn't have it flat. But you can get the idea that you'll get these like, now this is, that's what I'm looking for. Let me try it again. We'll get a little bit of, if I can remember how I did it now. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these cathedral things. Let me show you that on a piece of, of formica that we have here. You see what I'm talking about? These cathedrals are never, ever just perfectly correct. You might find one that's a little higher on one side and it's a little straight on the other side. So it kind of shows you that wood is not perfect. This is an actual photograph of wood and it's put on this formica. Here's another cathedral that you can see is not really perfect. There's a, a little lower place in here, so it kind of shows you that you haven't got to worry about uh, getting it absolutely perfect because wood was really not, not perfect. I'm not really happy with this, but let's try a little bit more and see what we can do. With a little practice, I'm kind of getting ahead of the situation here now. Okay, now, if you wanted to change 
colors, for instance, you wanted to go to a different kind of, uh, of a color, like, for instance, a uh, Ford, the early Fords had like a, uh, a real light birch type wood. Well, you would use a different base color, and you would maybe use uh, a different top color. These oils come in all colors. They come in uh, light grays and tans and beiges. So you could work with any kind of a color you wanted, depending on, and just have to practice with it. Here's another piece of formica, and of course you can see it's a, it's a light beige. And if you get real sharp with this uh, cathedral tool, you'll be able to connect these like this by starting on one side and doing it one way and starting on the other side to do it the other way. And you'll sort of leave that connection in the center. But you see all of this grain is not similar. There's a lot of sides that are different from one another. And then you have this area in here where you have uh, none of those cathedrals at all, which is kind of like this area here. You can also doctor this up a little bit by taking the uh, toothpicks again over this area and sort of change that maybe. You know, run these, whatever you want to do. And it, sometimes it just, it looks horrible, but when you get through putting some clear on this, you'd, be, you'd just be amazed at how pretty it's going to look. Now, what we want you to do after you get finished with your wood grain and you got everything and you're happy with it, now it's time to put eight coats of acrylic clear lacquer on this. And you'll put eight double coats. By that I mean you'll spray it like this twice and you'll put a double coat on. It's very important that you put your clear inside of here and make sure that you put clear on this oil that you've smeared inside the dashboard. And by the way, if you want to continue your wood grain in there, you can do it. But you have to spray your clear all over this area. Any place you have oil, you have to spray clear on it. And that's the way it's going to cure. If you don't, then when you put the car together and you've got your nice, up, nice upholstering you're putting in there and you're wondering where you're coming up with this. So you spray everything clear. And once you get that first coat of clear on the dashboard, you're sunk. You're finished. You have to be happy with what you've got. And if you're not happy with the grain, experiment some more. It doesn't hurt to wipe it off and start all over again. And if for some reason after you put the clear on it, it doesn't look good enough, sandblast it and do it again. Remember, this is a hobby and it just takes time to do these things and you can have a real good time. This is, these are just a, a couple, couple, three of the different kind of grains and you can experiment with these grains. Uh, and actually, take a piece of wood and set it alongside and take a brush and try to try to duplicate some of those those things by pulling the color off you cut this off a little bit and make it a little bit uh, sturdier and you could actually pull some of this oil off of here and wipe it off on a rag and you could build your cathedrals out of the brush it's just a matter of taking time but the nice thing about the oils is you can play with it for hours if you're not happy wash it off and go again and have a good time doing it we played around with this a little bit so we could get some of the grains we wanted. We mixed them up, played around a little bit when we got finished here. After we got our grain on, we took and put eight coats of clear on this. We put them on about every 10 to 15 minutes, letting the first coat flash through so that you don't trap uh, solvents underneath or you don't have a wet spot. After we got our eight coats of clear on, we took this home and stored it in a nice warm room at about 70 degrees. And it takes about two weeks for this to cure. If you don't let this set long enough, you're, ab you're liable to gouge down and get your, uh, dig up some of the oils. So you have to let it cure. After we got it cured, we took some 2,000 grit paper, ultra-fine paper, and we'd sand this just like you would a piece of furniture. Just sand it nice and smooth, and we got it all nice and smooth. Then we came back with some light rubbing compound and we would rub this until we got a real shiny finish. Rub all those sanding marks out. Now the way to know if you have clear or not on something is when you're sand clear, 
the water in your sandpaper and whatnot is going to have a white coating on it. If you want to find out if you got clear on your automobile, just go to some obscure place and sand lightly and you'll find that it, if it has clear, it'll turn white. If it doesn't, you'll get the color of whatever the car is. Now after we rub this with rubbing compound, we come back with a light polish. And we put a polish on this and shine it up with the polish. Now the thing that you don't want to put on a, on a new lacquer paint job is wax. The manufacturer or the people who make paint will tell you that when you're putting, when you're using lacquer, make sure that you let it cure for at least three months before you ever put wax on. So I'm not using wax. I'm just using a polish of some kind. In three months or longer, I can come back and I can put a wax on this and maybe really bring a, a great shine to this uh, dashboard. But as you can see, we've got a lot of different kind of grains we tried to demonstrate uh, to you. We have uh, like a cathedral over here. We have this straight grain in here. We have uh, the burl and this thing that the Model A Club published and some straight grain here that we did with a comb on our uh, wood graining tool and then uh, some more straight grain we did with the uh, newspaper here. With just a little bit of effort and practice, you can make a beautiful dashboard. One thing you have to remember is do it safe. Use your mask, use your eye protection, the rubber gloves, and read the instructions on the can. That'll be a big help, not only in safety, but in everything else. You know, we have seen, oh, dozens and dozens of beautiful cars painted by amateurs. First time they ever painted one. I don't really know what they did, but they tell us they did it themselves. They uh, probably went to a body shop and got information or whatever the case might be, but did beautiful jobs. And you can do it too. Just keep it safe. Remember, it's easy. You can do it yourself.